In our fast-paced, ever-changing world, resilience has become more crucial than ever. Resilience is not about avoiding difficulties, but about navigating through them. It's the skill to bounce back from adversity, a trait that can be developed and strengthened over time. For example, someone who overcomes a personal loss and finds a way to grow from the experience demonstrates high resilience. But how do we cultivate this resilience? It begins with fostering a positive mindset, practicing self-care, and building strong social connections. Mindfulness and cognitive behavioral techniques can also be instrumental in developing coping strategies. Furthermore, resilience isn't just an individual journey. Supportive environments, whether in families, workplaces, or communities, play a vital role in nurturing resilience. Recognizing and managing stress, providing emotional support, and encouraging open communication are key factors. Understanding and developing psychological resilience can profoundly impact our well-being. It equips us to handle life's challenges more effectively, leading to improved mental health and overall life satisfaction.
Sustainable tourism is an important idea in the travel business today. It's important to think about how our travel affects the environment, neighborhoods, and economies as we discover new places and cultures. There's more to sustainable travel than just cutting down on carbon emissions. It's about protecting the culture and natural history of the places we visit. Ecotourism projects, which focus on protecting the environment and helping local communities, are becoming more and more popular. Local people can make more money through these projects, which also protect nature habitats. But the problem of sustainable travel is bigger than what one person does. Governments, tourist businesses, and travelers all need to work together to make it happen. For instance, making rules that limit the damage that tourism does to the earth, supporting local businesses, and teaching tourists about traveling responsibly is an important step. Sustainable tourism is a way to enjoy the world's beauty while also protecting it for future generations. This is important because the world is facing environmental problems and culture homogenization. By traveling in a way that doesn't harm the environment, we weren't just tourists. We were protectors of the world's many and valuable cultures and landscapes.
In the heart of every holiday season lies a tapestry woven with threads of tradition, joy, and connection. Whether it's the glow of lights adorning streets or the scent of freshly baked treats wafting through homes, holidays offer a sanctuary where cherished memories are born. From bustling gatherings to quiet moments of reflection, each celebration paints a canvas of unity and gratitude. In these shared experiences, we find solace and strength weaving bonds that transcend distance and time. Whether it's the exchange of gifts or the sharing of stories, holidays bridge gaps and kindle the spirit of togetherness. Through laughter and love, we pay homage to our past, embrace the present, and cast hopeful eyes toward the future. For in the tapestry of holidays, every thread represents a moment cherished, a bond strengthened, and a joy celebrated. Hobbies are the vibrant threads that add color and depth to the fabric of our lives. They are the avenues through which we explore our passions, express our creativity, and find solace in moments of leisure. From the quiet tranquility of painting to the adrenaline rush of extreme sports, hobbies encompass a vast spectrum of interests and activities. They provide us with a sense of fulfillment and purpose beyond the demands of everyday life. Engaging in a hobby allows us to delve into new skills, expand our knowledge, and connect with like-minded individuals who share our interests, whether it's gardening, photography, playing musical instruments, or simply indulging in a good book. Hobbies offer a sanctuary where we can immerse ourselves fully and recharge our spirits. In the tapestry of life, hobbies are the intricate patterns that reflect our unique personalities and enrich our journey with joy and fulfillment. we need to work together across borders to solve global issues. In the modern world, no world or border can protect us from crisis. We have no other choice but to unite. And we need to do it fast. In 2016, I was devastated by the UK's decision to leave the European Union. I'm French, and for me, the EU is a symbol of a more open and global society. But suddenly, my beliefs were shattered, and I wasn't alone in feeling this way. My partner Andrea, who is Italian, and Damien, a German friend, also felt the shock of seeing the world turning inward. We realized that despite being from three different countries, we, wit we witnessed the same challenges. Migration flows being dealt with in an inhuman manner, climate change or high youth unemployment. And we also had the same hopes and dreams in our everyday lives. We also realized that to solve European issues, the outdated model of always putting national interests first had to go. Around five years ago, it struck me that I was losing the ability to engage with people who aren't like-minded. 
The idea of discussing hot button issues with my fellow Americans was starting to give me more heartburn than the times that I engaged with suspected extremists overseas. It was starting to leave me feeling more embittered and frustrated. And so just like that, I shifted my entire focus from global national security threats to trying to understand what was causing this push towards extreme polarization at home. As a former CIA officer and diplomat who spent years working on counter years working on counter extremism issues, I started to fear that this was becoming a far greater threat to our democracy than any foreign adversary. And so I started digging in and I started speaking out, which eventually led me to being hired at Facebook. Good morning. Thank you for coming in for the interview. Let's start by discussing your previous work experience. Can you tell me about a challenging project you've worked on? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Certainly. One project that stands out was when I was tasked with revamping our company's website to improve user experience. It involved extensive research, collaboration with multiple teams, and implementing feedback from user testing sessions. It was challenging to balance the needs of different stakeholders while adhering to tight deadlines. That sounds like quite the endeavor. How did you manage any conflicts that arose during the project? Communication was key. I made sure to facilitate open discussions, actively listen to everyone's perspectives, and find common ground to resolve conflicts effectively. Additionally, I always kept the project goals in mind to guide decision-making. Impressive. Can you give me an example of how you handled a difficult team member during the project? Certainly. There was a team member who was resistant to change and consistently pushed back on our proposed design revisions. Instead of escalating the situation, I took the time to understand their concerns, addressed them empathetically, and provided rationale for the changes based on user feedback and industry best practices. Eventually, we were able to reach a compromise that satisfied everyone. It sounds like you handled that situation with patience and diplomacy. Thank you for sharing your experiences. We'll be in touch soon regarding the next steps in the interview process. Hi there. I'm calling to inquire about booking a room at your hotel for a weekend getaway. Hello. Absolutely. We'd love to assist you with that. Could you please provide me with the dates you're looking to stay? Sure. We're thinking of arriving on Friday the 15th and departing on Sunday the 17th. Great. And how many adults will be staying in the room? It'll be just my wife and me. So two adults. Perfect. We have several room options available. Are you interested in a standard room or would you prefer to upgrade to a suite? We're celebrating our anniversary, so a suite sounds lovely. Wonderful choice. I'll go ahead and reserve a suite for you. Can I have your name and contact information to complete the booking? Of course, my name is John Smith, and my phone number is 555-123-4567. Thank you, John. Your suite is reserved, and we look forward to welcoming you both for a memorable staycation.
The body of the worker bee is divided into three segments, head, thorax, and abdomen. On the head are the mandibles, the jaw-like organs which enable the bees to perform the necessary hive duties and to mold the wax and build their combs. The honey bee's four wings and six legs are fastened to the thorax. Located in the abdomen are the honey sac and the sting, with its highly developed poison sac. The sting is used by the workers for self-defense and for the protection of their colony. The worker uses her sting only once, for in doing so, she... Composition is the organization of shapes and forms into a whole, an expressive whole. The elements of composition, line, shape, tone, and color, need to be well arranged, need to be ordered, they need to be coherent, just like the words and phrases and sentences in a piece of writing. All paintings have a compositional element. Successful paintings sort of suggest the third dimension, the sense that the design goes beyond the picture frame. A picture's unity, which includes the shapes, tones, and colors, is linked to what the artist has to say. The artist's message is strongest when it's... It's amazing how similar the shapes and sizes of domestic dogs are, and different emirate breeds have different coats. When it comes to fur, they can have smooth, wavy, curly, stiff, or short hair. Scientists looked at the DNA of one individual dog from 80 different breeds to find the genes that make up this fluffy rainbow. And they found that the look of every coat is based on three easy things, length, line, and texture. Plus, each of these traits is caused by a single gene. So, a golden monitor with long hair has one type of the gene FGF5, while a lab with short hair has another type. Researchers looked at how much and what kinds of waste products got from users to wastewater that hadn't been cleaned. The magazine Addiction talks about this midwived cab. The study looked for meth, 
cocaine, and ecstasy in 96 municipal water teapot facilities across Oregon. The facilities agreed to take part. All, all of the samples were taken on the same day, in places where about three-quarters of the people in that state live. Whispering winds carry secrets of the night. Fluttering butterflies dance among blooming flowers gracefully. Midnight stars twinkle in the velvet sky above. Laughter echoes through the tranquil forest grove. Timeless melodies soothe the weary soul's longing.